everybody. Um, thank you for joining me again. <laughs> um, today we're talking about Norma Ray from 1979 and um, I'm mixing it up a little bit today <laughs> because normally what I do is I hand write some notes for myself but um, sometimes I can't read my handwriting so <laughs> I decided to type today so that's exciting. <laughs> um, so Norma Ray is a film about a single mother who works in a local textile factory and it's the it's the kind of situation where everyone in the town works there and her parents work there and I guess the implication is that their parents work there like it's sort of it's that kind of a town so the factory has all of the power and they don't care for like the health and safety of their workers so it's kind of just an accepted thing until um some of Norma Ray's family are affected um their health is compromised so Norma Ray decides to um make a move for a change and is inspired to join the union and to unionize um so Norma Ray is played by Sally Field um, which, I mean, I think everyone maybe knows Sally Field, but she's from Forrest Gump, Still Magnolias, most recently maybe Lincoln, um, not most recently, but more recently. Um, and it's directed by Martin Ritt, who did HUD, Spy Who Came In From The Cold. The film itself is based on Crystal Lee Sutton, and I guess more exactly it's based on the book about her. Um, which is called Crystal Lee, A Woman of Inheritance. So the um, that book is based around a big controversy at J.P. Stevens and um, the way they would bully workers and fire them if they tried to unionize and just sort of try to keep people in their place and not pay them properly and not give them proper benefits and stuff like that. Um, and so Crystal Lee was instrumental in fighting for change and making things happen there. Um, so the film isn't exactly her life, but that's sort of the basis of it. Um, the film had four Academy Award nominations that year, and Sally Field won Best Actress at Cannes. So the film's been really, um, was really well received, and uh, it's not actually in the Thousand and One Movies You Must See book. Which I like, I think that's a really fun book to help you just watch films more widely um, because it's got a lot of the, you know, a thousand and one films that you can watch. And it didn't make it into that one, but it has been um, preserved and is in a lot of like um, classic film lists and things like that. So the film also stars Bo Bridges as Sonny. And Ron Liebman as a Re Reuben, who is the union man. Um, so Norma Ray herself, she is very poor. Um, there, the locate this the film was shot in Alabama, and the locations and things are really interesting. The factory with its like massive like noise is kind of just like looking at it everything's gray and steel and it's kind of soul crushing and norma ray's house where she lives with her parents initially is not um it's actually i mean it's kind of a cute place in a way but it's obviously sort of poor like it's not in the best possible repair it could be in um but norma ray herself is um pretty she's sassy she's loyal but she's got a tough exterior because she's had her heart broken a few times. Um, Sally Field plays that really well. She kind of embodies a sort of every woman in this film, I think. Like, she's very relatable. Um, but, I mean, I haven't... I've never worked in a factory, you know? Like, I, she kind of makes it very accessible to somebody that hasn't had the same experiences. Um... Yeah, and I guess, you know, we all need to make ends meet. Um, but I think it's quite easy for women of her 
class and level of education. She, uh, in the film, she has two children from um, different fathers and yeah, it's kind of easy to look down on her and kind of dismiss her, I think, um, you know, on paper. But Sally Field makes her somebody who you uh, are rooting for her to win. You can see her vulnerability and that tough exterior where she's like, she's cynical now um, at this point in her life. Um, and I think it's sort of interesting that I think most women in her town have probably had a couple of bad relationships and um, haven't had like a fairy tale life. But in this film, it's sort of their their company and the people that want to shut down the union are really quick to want to um, use her romantic life against her. Like if you can just slut shame a woman, then anything that she says does not matter. Um, so the status quo at the start of the film is obviously, you know, she's working in the factory. Her parents work in the factory as well. Her friends all work there. Um, she wants to create some change and she stands up for herself and initially that means she gets a small promotion but it sets her apart from her friends and her family because she has to oversee their work and so she has to be demoted um so that's one course of change that doesn't really sort of gel for her but what really uh changes the equilibrium of her life is two men that come into the situation. So Sonny, played by Bo Bridges, um, is a decent man. So he meets her, he thinks she's amazing. She kind of makes it clear she's not going to take any crap from anyone. She's not sure she's interested. And he wins her over by being honest, saying what he like, saying what he thinks and what he feels for her and being um being a good person, basically. Um I think a lot of the men in her life have been crappy people. Um, her father is lovely, actually. But um, <coughs> a lot of... Um, I think the sort of milieu that the film is creating is that uh, some of these men kind of fly through or they're unreliable or it's not socially unacceptable for them to have affairs or sort of use women and leave them, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, women are kind of interchangeable and disposable in this world, not just in relationships, but in the workplace as well. So women aren't expecting kindness and, um, then here's Sonny and he knows what he wants. And that really changes things for Norma Ray because it shifts her view of what's possible in her life. And, um, I think it probably shifts her view of herself as well and what's possible for her. The second man that comes in is Ruben, played by Ron Liebman, who is the union man. Um, he gets a bit more screen time than Sonny, uh, who I think Sonny is a very important uh, player, but he isn't so much a source of conflict as much as Ruben is. Um, so initially he's handing out sort of flyers at the gates of the union uh, the gates of the factory, sorry. And there's a lot of resistance towards him. And Norma Ray kind of gives him a hard time at first. And I think her kind of sassy outspokenness is probably where he thinks, okay, I can manage to talk to her, you know? Um, the people in the factory have really been raised to think that unions are bad and maybe don't really care or are just kind of trying to create trouble and aren't actually going to fix things. Um, I think people probably don't necessarily know what a union is for in this film as well. Um, cause these people are not particularly, you know, political and that kind of thing. Um, so the other fear is that if they, you know, resist and ask for change and ask for decent wages, that they'll get fired or maybe worse. But No More sees that change has to happen and she starts to stand up for it and fight for it and inspires other people. Um, and she gets her, gets people together and starts to um, get things going. And it it is a case. I mean, the people aren't wrong. Uh, if you form a union and start talking back to these people that have, you know, used to having power and 
not used to people saying no to them um and also probably not used to like a woman standing up to them i guess um yeah i mean some pretty horrible things happen um so yeah i think one thing i kind of like is the dynamic between uh ruben and norma ray there's kind of an attraction there because as he starts to talk to her about things you know her life and her mind and her understanding are ex are expanding so that's kind of nice but they're not just like they don't just sort of get along all the time um they're quite different and um they're both quite guarded about their lives in uh, different ways um i think there's a i'd say there's like an attraction between the two of them that's sort of part of the story but I like that it's not just like, um, you know, he's a guy and she's a girl, so they have to get together, you know, like kind of manufactured or um, there's a genuine relationship that is built over time and makes sense within the context of the film. And there's a genuine care and respect between them as well. And I think it's really nice that there's more there. And I think it's also really nice that they can... In this story context they can be friends they can work together um it's not just like automatic that um there's not just like an automatic romance there which i think can be a little tired when it's sort of always a meet cute um so yeah i think we don't often get a lot of stories about people of this demographic this sort of poorer maybe working classes, um, they're kind of looked down on a lot. And it, I think that's true in the story world and in, in the real world. The company sees them as disposable and as property. And I think socially, you know, people make fun of rednecks or the uneducated or that kind of thing. And I think there's a sense as well um, of kind of dehumanizing a group of people in that way. Um, I think the idea is sometimes that, you know, if these people got an education, but like, how is that gonna happen? Or um, the idea that you kind of brought things on yourself and as if they had the same choices that maybe other people have. Um, I guess what I'm trying to say is these people work a full, week they work full time and they work hard and they are exhausted and in exchange they're not cared for they're not um kept safe their health isn't taken care of which are kind of basic things and also if you work full time and you still can't make ends meet and you live in one of the richest countries in the world there's something kind of wrong there you know uh, so yeah, the women, rather than having agency in this world and a lot of choices, they're generally sort of victims of violence. They're slut shamed. They work to make a living. Um, yeah. So I think here it's nice that these people are human beings and they're, uh, we get to see what their lives are like. They're not looked down on. This film is in, um, shaming them in any way and I like that so yeah I think the American dream for them is just a dangled carrot that they can work towards until their bodies give out but they're never gonna reach it um, so it's I think that's one of the things that's so wonderful about seeing Norma Ray stand up it seems like an impossible impossible odds you know she's one person against an entire system an entire uh, town so I think if you want to know more about why we don't see a lot of stories about these kinds of people or why they're sort of uh, shameful or denigrated or laughed at, I think I would highly recommend reading anything by Sarah Small. She's written two books. One of them is called Heartland and she's written another one as well. They're both really really good and very insightful and um i think they're a lot like this film and that they shift your understanding of how life works for different 
groups of people, which is always um, a good thing. Expand your understanding. Um, so yeah, I love that this film takes us visually from shotgun houses and these kinds of um, poorer homes to screeching factory machinery and just deafening noise to meetings of people coming together and there's kind of a warmth and a community there and then there's also almost in opposition to the factory there's moments of sort of innocence where um characters just go have a little impromptu swim in a lake or that kind of thing it's uh it's a really nice film it's nicely shot and um i really like a film that's nicely shot if a film is beautiful like i'll watch it uh, so yeah, and things are not all one thing or another here. People, I don't think anyone here is really like a cartoon, um, maybe the factory owner, but I think you get the sense that he has a family too, and he's just working under the status quo that he's always worked under. Um, I like that Norma Ray is a really good mother who loves her children, um, just because they have different fathers, it's not. It doesn't make her less of a good parent. Uh, I love that she's afraid and she's vulnerable, but she's scrappy. Um, she's so easy to root for her succeeding. And um, it makes it a really enjoyable watch. Like it's very, she's so, I love Sally Field. She's so watchable. Uh, it's not easy for her, but she sees the whole thing through and the film leaves you with such a good feeling, like hopeful, triumphant. Um, yeah, it's definitely Sally Field's film. I mean, she is the main character, obviously, but, um, there's just something about her that you're just watching her and I love that. Um, and I think, you know, there's a lot of things going on in the world lately, to put it lightly, and it's lovely to watch a film that takes you out of your, um you know, current day and kind of puts you somewhere else. I think that's one of the nice things about older films. But it's also, it leaves you at the end with that underdog feeling of, you know, the little guy um, can make change. One person can make change. And yeah, I don't know. I think that's such a wonderful thing to kind of, to see and to realize sometimes. Um, so yeah, that is Norma Ray from 1979. <laughs> yeah, from 1979. Um, I recommend it. I think it's a good one. And um, I probably say this a lot, but <laughs> these films are classics for a reason. So um, yeah, whether you are, you know, political or, or not, um, I think, you know, this is a very human film and anyone can watch it. So yeah, um, thank you for watching and yeah I, I appreciate all of you <laughs> so much who watch these it's really fun to um, share these films with you so um, yeah 